the God idea is the opposite idea of, of evolution in that it, what it needs so much as an explanation is way out of proportion to what it actually explains. It does the very opposite of, of evolution. Um, so uh, Stevens just said that idea of people getting their head around that something so complicated could be explained by something so simple. I, I, given the sort of earlier culture and the life that people had, which was so theologically focused, that, that the idea of the very idea, that, that it's such a reversal of what was taken for granted, that it is a, hu it's a huge conceptual leap for anybody to make, isn't it? it, 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 it massive, and the, one of the things that I was talking about, how people seized on the idea and in some ways misunderstood it, and you might even think willfully did. One thing that happened, and maybe we'll bring in Stephen Pinker on this, is the idea that somehow, you know, the genes were destiny, and this is what drew decided people even individually, it was all encoded. That's been an area, a, a sort of misconception in you know, popular thinking for decades. Do you, do you, what role did your book play in either confounding that or actually, because of that potential to misunderstand, in people thinking, ah, so that person's like that because of their genes? Yeah, insofar as it played a role, it was, it was massively misunderstood. I mean, um, the, the question of destiny is a deep philosophical question, which Dan Dennett's contributed a, a lot to. But it doesn't become a different problem if you suddenly bring genes in. Mm. So we can ignore the idea of genetic determinism. Could I add one more thing to the mystery of why it took, took so long? Um, Ernst Meyer, the great centenarian um, founding father of modern um, e evolutionary genetics, um, suggested that it was because of platonic um, essentialism. Um, if, you, if, you, if you're a geometer like, like Plato, then, then you see a triangle. Um, as a, or, or, some, or a sphere as an ideal form. And he regarded real triangles and real spheres as kind of imperfect approximations to this ideal. Meyer's theory is that people were used to that idea applied to living things. So you had an ideal rabbit, an ideal rhinoceros, and real rabbits and real rhinoceroses were approximations yeah. to this ideal form. And if you, think of, if you think of rabbits and rhinoceroses and kangaroos as having ideal forms, you're automatically resistant to the idea that they could change into something else. So that's Meyer's explanation for why it took so long. The, so there was actually a barrier in the way we the saw... The dead the hand of Plato, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can always blame Plato for everything. The, um, we, can I just add, add on, on Plato in, in that case? Um, wonderful story. There, there was an ancient history don in, in, in New College who, who's, you mean he was a very old don? No, he was he, a no, don he, in he, ancient history. He, he did end up rather old, but, <laughs> but, but um, and his life's work, this is an exaggeration, was to decide whether Plato or St. Paul was the greatest shit of all time. <laughs> 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 well, you've elegantly taken us to our, uh, I, to our next subject, really, which is about religion. <laughs> um, uh, I should mention that we are going to, I'm deliberately going to leave a lot of time for your own questions to this panel, and particularly, I'm sure, for Richard Dawkins. So I'm going to just push on uh, and get on to this uh, you know, other huge area which, in which you've written so prominently, uh, and it is the book which is also 10 years old this year, The God Delusion. Um, uh, let's just speak, why don't you kick us off, Darren, Darren about this, the, the, how important, uh, you know, Richard Dawkins, he was hailed as one of sort of a group of so-called new atheists, uh, and in your own uh, work, in this tour that you're doing now, you describe it as secular faith healing, or well, that's part of it. Why don't you tell us what that, is, what that idea is about and what sort of debt it owes to what Richard Dawkins and, and others have been writing in this area? Yes, well, I, I grew up a, a, a Christian and went to various quite happy, clappy churches as well as quite quiet Anglican ones and uh, sort of grew out of it because I didn't really have a Christian uh, family or friends particularly. Um, so I'd sort of drifted out of it at university after having become a hypnotist and a magician and things that sort of made me think more skeptically. Uh, it was only reading The God Delusion that kind of, I think, as for a lot of people, finally gave it a sort of a language and uh, in the way that you tend to find things inspiring that articulate something you already kind of feel but haven't really found the language for. Um, so now, uh, how many years on? 20, 15 years on? I, no, 10, 15 years on? Since then, the since reading it, pardon? Ten. Ten. Ten, goodness, yeah. I, um, yeah, I'm doing a secular faith healing show at the moment, which I'm touring with. And it's, uh, it's, there was definitely a guilty moment, I think, a couple of years after I'd 
come out of the belief when somebody actually said, oh, well, do you believe in God then? And I sort of said no. And it was the first time I'd actually said that. I had a little, a little burst of uh, guilty adrenaline. And that was it. It just disappeared. That was gone. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yes, it's, I'm, I'm now in this inter interesting situation where I'm um, taking an audience largely like you. I mean, certainly not an evangelical audience. Probably the very polar opposite of, the, uh, of an evangelical audience and doing faith healing on them every night, <laughs> um, healing them. Uh, and I've got them, you know, falling over in the aisles and all the rest of it, and something I thought would never, would never happen. It's been a very interesting project. I thought I'd start off uh, understanding the, the, the mechanics of how it would work and how I could sort of get it to work with a, with a secular and very skeptical audience. I thought I'd maybe achieve a bit of sort of pain relief and that you create enough adrenaline and people will not feel pain. I didn't expect to get quite the extent of uh, response that it's, that it's had, so it's been a very And it's part of your thing. purpose in doing it to expose as fake somehow yeah. healing that is in the name of faith. You're showing it, it doesn't... Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the part of the problem with any sort of debunking is that you're, yes, you're sort of just saying, um, you know, normally just, no, this thing isn't, this isn't true, and you're sort of trying to supply facts to the contrary, or to the contrary of the demonstrations that you're trying to discredit. Um, which isn't really a very uh, interesting or entertaining message compared to what the, the charlatans themselves are doing, which obviously is much more sort of engaging. So what I've always tried to do is replicate... Um, oh, so you didn't want the religious devil to have all the good tunes, mm. as it were? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. But if you just stand there and explain how a psychic works, for example, and somebody will listen to that probably and go, OK, well, that's how psychic... But it's but not how the psychic does it that I saw because she made me feel this, so therefore it must be something else. Sorry. Now, what happens apart from them falling down in the aisles? I mean, what do you have... Oh, going? well, they, they're pro properly healed. Well, Maybe get, not... Get up out of their wheelchairs and <laughs> Maybe dance. not for very long, but they are... I mean, I've, I've had... There's a small percentage of people... I mean, I don't know what the percentage is, but I'm guessing a very small percentage of people that do say, just so you know, it's three months later and the arthritis is still gone. Um, I'd imagine 99% of people, it's an entirely temporary thing that happens. There. And I'm very open about this. I mean, it is done in a... I, I play the role of the faith healer, but I absolutely bookend it with, um, uh, you know, very open about what's, what's going on. Um, but your, yeah, point is, had, your, point, your point, I suppose, is to show that so-called real faith healers are actually mm. what, fakes, and that there's nothing religious about it. Yeah, or certainly... I mean, the most I can show, of course, is that here is something that can be perfectly well reproduced... Mm. It doesn't, therefore, logically extend to, therefore, all of that must be fake. But certainly what I find myself doing is taking the bits that can be reproduced and going, well, look, this can certainly be done without recourse to a, uh, an extraordinary explanation. 